So hi, hello and welcome, Micropunter here. Um, we are now going to buy approximately 20 microscopes uh, for our school, so for educational use. And uh, because this is quite a bit of an investment, we decided we're going to first uh, contact the microscope retailer um, and uh, to get uh, two sample microscopes that we can expect and they arrived today. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to unpack them. I'm just also going to show them uh, which uh, microscopes uh, we're going to look at in more detail. And, and then uh, basically the idea is, is that that the team of teachers are then going to decide which one to choose. Um, basically, it is like this that one of them uh, is a Euromax uh, microscope, the other one is a Multic microscope. Um, on the, uh, the concerning the features, they're quite similar, uh, but we still want to get an overview of uh, mainly of the handling of the two microscopes um, because the microscopes are not allowed to be too heavy because children are going to be using them. They have to put them back into the cupboard and they have to take them out. At the other, um, on the other hand, we don't want them to be too light and flimsy either, so we need something in the middle. Okay, so basically, uh, these are the two samples, and we're now going to have a look um, at it. And in this in this process, uh, maybe um, I, I can also explain to you why we. Uh, decided on these particular features. What I also requested is, is that they include a 60 times magnifying objective here. That's what they have done. But what we're not going to do is we decided very quickly that we're not going to use oil immersion and we wanted to have monocular microscopes. So, so this means that uh, basically microscopes with only, only one eyepiece. Uh, I was, however, informed that they did not have one of them in stock. Uh, so one of them is going to be a binocular model, but it doesn't matter because we still can then see uh, generally on how the handling of the microscope is like. So now let's uh, start to unpack. Uh, Let's start to unpack them. And one of the reasons why we ordered uh, these two samples is, is because we uh, once had already very bad experience. We bought a whole set of no-name microscopes, uh, basically very, very cheaply, and we were not satisfied with them. So that we said before we make any additional investments, we're simply going to have a more, a more detailed look at them before we purchase them. So that's basically what we have here. So this is basically how it looks like. Um, Let's uh, basically see a little bit in more detail. That is uh, the, the dust cover. It's called Bio Blue. This just seems to be the, the brand name. Um, what do we have here? Yes, these are the empty um, cans, canisters uh, for keeping the objectives. Um, yeah, because they are already mounted uh, in here. Um, what we have is, is we have, of course, a power plug. And now I have the issue. Oh, yeah, there is a fuse here. Um, there are some tools here. Um, this is uh, a, yeah for the um, illuminator, it's, some, it's a glass a diffuser, okay, so, and this is basically the microscope. Now, I don't know how I'm gonna take it out, holding the camera at the same time. The instruction manual, and yeah, I'm just gonna try this single-handedly. This is basically how it looks like. Yeah, so that's basically uh, the first one. It's a monocular microscope, as I already promised. And this is how it looks like. Um, coarse and fine focus knob, of course. This is important. So that is basically, um, yeah, how it looks like. It's actually quite okay. It's not too heavy. Um, looks nice, honestly. It really looks nice. Um, yeah. I mean, I know these objectives actually uh, because uh, I've, we've got another microscope uh, which has exactly the same objectives. We have the mechanical stage here. Um, I like uh, that uh, the scale is clearly visible. And here that's the other one. Looks very nice, honestly. Down here the, we have uh, the light intensity regulator, the condenser. Uh -huh, can be raised and lowered like this. Condenser diaphragm is here. Actually, I, I'm, I'm quite quite convinced. Ah, look, uh, student proof. Uh, it's not possible to remove uh, the eyepiece uh, that easily. Uh, this one here can be turned. There is a little bit of a resistance, but not too much. Very nice. It goes very smoothly. Um, there is the possibility to attach a fourth uh, objective. I like it. Where's the main switch? Uh, the main switch is here in the back. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's basically the first one. Um, and uh, I'm going to now put this one up on display 
and then our uh, teachers have to decide whether this is actually one that we want or not. Course and fine focus, no, I'm not even going to look uh, through it right now because I know that the image quality is going to be fine anyway. I know the objectives and I know what to expect, so there is no no problem here. Um, this is, of course, a 160 millimeters DIN, the, the traditional standard, of course. Um, and it's okay, it's not too heavy, so I'll put this up for display. So now let's have a look at the other microscope. Okay, that is now the Multic microscope. It's also a very uh, common uh, brand, which you can find quite often also in the educational sector. Okay, so let's have a look here. So basically this is what you get here. Um, again, the empty uh, objective uh, cans uh, over here, of course, uh, the cover. The microscope cover all of the tools as expected. Uh -huh. It comes with a set of eyepieces. Ah, because they are not included yet. Now, this is a binocular version. Um, they did not have the monocular version in stock, uh, but we were ultimately going to get the monocular version if we decide to buy this one, because many students actually have a problem looking through uh, uh, with both eyes, and uh, most of the time they close uh, one of the eyes anyway. One is a little bit bigger. It's also a little bit heavier. So you cannot see this yet. So that's basically how this one looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, of course, uh, there are some caps in here that I have to remove. Also very nice, honestly. Oh, really, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that for such a reasonable price that you can get such a quality device. Unbelievable. A few years ago, this would have not been possible. Also the Light intensity regular, very smooth, very nice. Also this one here turns it very smoothly. Also again, the mechanical stage, just like before. Ah, this is the reason this was has to be removed first. That's why it didn't move. Here we have, of course, also the condenser, filter holder, iris diaphragm is here. How do you raise and lower this one here? Um, there's also should be a way to, ah, also they also have a lever here. See, this one is the way how you raise and lower this one here. Okay, we here, this one here has uh, three um, objectives. All the 160 millimeter DIN standard, you know this because it says the 160 over here. Let's put them next to each other. They look similar also from the outside. Again, we're gonna get the monocular version here. So what I have to do is I've got to take this out here and uh, put the eyepiece in. This one here has an external adapter. Okay, so an external power source. But honestly, this looks okay. It's not that big and heavy. It really doesn't make a difference. I mean, basically this one goes in here um, and then plugs in over here. Honestly, it's so small and light. It really doesn't make a difference of whether we actually have this or not, honestly. And here, of course, we have an internal uh, power just realized that uh, you can also attach a fourth objective here. So both of them have uh, basically four objectives. I would say that basically both of these microscopes are, are pretty much equal. They're pretty much the same. Well, this one over here, the lamp here is a little bit smaller. Maybe it already co is concentrated a little bit more than over here. Here there's a larger lens, but I don't know if this actually makes a significant difference concerning light intensity. I'd have to check that. Both cases. Yeah, the mechanics seem to work extremely smooth. I think two excellent devices. Um, I wouldn't be able to make a decision now. Maybe ultimately it boils down to cost and maybe also weight. Of course this one is a little bit heavier now because it has a binocular um, head here. Okay, let's put in the eyepieces. What I'm gonna do now is I'm simply gonna attach the 60 times objective. Take. Here it is. And in goes, I have to un unscrew this here first, right? Without getting any dust in, I'm gonna connect this one here. Okay, so finished. 
Well, both of these microscopes uh, belong to this 160 millimeter standard, a very common standard. Um, and just to show you what this means is, I mean, I just connected uh, this 60x objective over here to this microscope, but theoretically I could actually also connect it to this one over here. Um, it's going to fit, okay? So I'm just going to show you that actually it does fit um, because the threading here um, is standardized. It's the RMS threading, they call it, from the Royal Microscopical Society. And it also fits in here. Okay, so that is possible. Um, the only thing is, is that now the two uh, objectives here are now of a different uh, brand. So the only problem that there might be uh, when you mix different objectives from different manufacturers is, is that you lose par focality. So this means you have to, when switching from one objective to the next one, you might have to refocus. Uh, uh, but if it's from the same series, so to say, then you don't need to refocus. So I would not automatically recommend that you mix uh, brands like this, but it is theoretically possible. At home, I have done that. Um, and uh, because I'm a little bit more experienced, uh, I don't mind refocusing. Um, for students, I do not recommend doing this, but uh, this is simply to show you that uh, essentially the systems are interchangeable, okay? So, but I'll now put it back again to where it should be. So basically, what are the, dif the differences now? The differences are that in one case, you've got the power supply on the outside, and in the other case, you've got it on the inside. Um, I thought that uh, initially that we should buy microscopes that have an internal power supply, but then actually I'm right now seeing it's not so big anyway. And as a matter of fact, the total mass of the cable here um, is actually uh, lower uh, than this one over here. It might also be easier to wrap uh, this cable around the microscope than this one over here. I think that's really a question of taste. Um, so that probably should not be a main, main uh, criterion. Um, let's walk on the other side. The other difference is, is the size of the focusing knobs, but even that is actually really totally um, irrelevant. Um, third difference is is that the brand of the objectives is different. Um, I don't know which one has now a slightly better quality, but honestly, for educational use, it really doesn't matter. I know these objectives, they work just fine. I don't know these here. I wouldn't probably see a big difference. I'd have to test this out. Um, the condenser, both of them have a filter holder. Both of them can be raised and lowered. Both of them have an iris diaphragm. I don't know, maybe the light intensity is different, I have to see. The intensity regulator knobs are here, it's a knob that you turn, here it's a wheel, not a big difference either. Um, here, mechanical stage, both of them have a mechanical stage, looks pretty much the same. This one is going to get all the mon monocular head, I don't know, honestly, both are equal at least uh, from what I can see from the outside now. What about the eyepieces? What do they have here? It's a 10 times, yeah, 18, 10 times 18. So that the 18 refers to the, uh, to the field, field of view. Even they are the same. Ah, yeah. Okay, so that is of course also a possibility that we have. Um, if there is no power supply available, you can use batteries. Mm -hmm. Not something that we absolutely need or require, but at least it's a possibility. Now this one is, of course, is a little bit more expensive because uh, it has a binocular head, but ultimately I think they're pretty much the same. Okay, let's uh, have a look at a few specimen slides. Okay, this one here shows me some cell divisions. Uh, that's the tip of an onion root, and I should be able to see some cell divisions here. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm, I'm looking at uh, some uh, cell divisions uh, from an onion root, root tip, um, and yeah, I'm going to simply, then later on also I'm going to show you what I see, okay? So that is basically uh, with 40 times total magnification, of course, very nice uh, picture, very clear. Uh, the objectives are all clean. Um, the ones that we've been using so far on the current microscopes, uh, basically the objectives are a little bit dirty already or the students have improperly cleaned them. The students should never clean objectives. It's always to be left up uh, to the people who actually know what they're doing. Um, but that's the reason why I see very, very clear, a very clear picture of the cell divisions. 
And here I'm now using the 60 times magnifying objective and this is of course, that is nice. Honestly, I think uh, what we should do is, is we should probably get them, uh, in any case, regardless which one we're, we're gonna choose, we should get one with a 60 times uh, magnifying objective giving us a total magnification of 600 times because then we can actually see the cell divisions very clearly. This does take a little bit of patience, of course, but these are now the cell divisions, okay? So you can see that uh, if uh, mitosis cell divisions are supposed to be taught in school, and if you want students to actually look at these cell divisions, then I think uh, the magnification is quite nice to have a 60 times 10 with a 600 times total magnification. And this is now uh, using the 40 times magnifying objective, and you can still see that it also works quite well. Okay. So, okay, now what about the Euromax? Uh, let's have a look at this one. You see, that's basically what you see. This black line that you see, that's an arrow. I can, I can turn the arrow. And uh, the other one also has this on the other eyepiece. It's a little bit difficult for me to hold it. Yeah, but I think you get the idea. So that is now using the 40 times magnifying objective. So which one's now easier to carry? I, mean, I could actually, yeah, that works quite well. Uh, here it's a little bit uh, smaller, okay. But for children's hands, it should be okay as well. It's also possible. For that, the microscope is a little bit lighter, but then again, on, only a monocular. I don't know. Uh, pretty much uh, equal in almost every respect. Yeah, so that I know that this was a pretty uh, spontaneous and unplanned unpacking video. Um, I think uh, I've given you now a small um, insight into the way that we've basically chosen the microscopes and what I look for. But ultimately, I think in both cases here, it, it's, it's probably a question of taste. Uh, both of these microscopes are also, I think, very good microscopes if you want to pick up amateur microscopy. Um, but I think uh, even if you cannot get exactly the same model or the same brand, I think it doesn't really matter. Um, I think you got now the idea of what I'm actually looking for when I, yeah, when I look at microscopes. Okay. I wish you a nice day. Happy micro hunting as always and bye-bye. Uh,